In the early days of the U.S. Parcel Service, there wasn't clear guidelines about what you could and couldn't mail. With that being said, in January of 1913, one Ohio couple took advantage of the U.S. Postal Service's new Parcel Service to make a very special delivery, their infant son. The Bokes paid 15 cents for his stamps and an unknown amount to insure him for $50, then handed him over to the mailman who dropped the boy off at his grandmother's house about a mile away. On January 1st, 1913, the U.S. Post Office began accepting parcels over four pounds, although the regulations about what you could and couldn't send were vague. People immediately started testing its limits by mailing eggs, bricks, snakes, and other unusual packages. So were people actually allowed to mail their kids? Well, technically there was no postal regulations against it at the time. The head curator of history at the National Postal Museum, Nancy Pope, says, The first few years of partial post service, it was a bit of a mess. You had different towns getting away with different things, depending on how their postmaster read the regulations. Pope has found about seven instances of people milling kids between 1913 and 1915, beginning with the baby in Ohio. It wasn't common to mail your kids, yet for long distances, it would have been cheaper to buy the stamps to send a kid by railway mail than to buy her a ticket on a passenger train. In the case of Mae Pierstorff, whose parents sent her to her grandparents' house 73 miles away, in February of 1914, the Idaho family paid 53 cents for all the stamps, and the postal worker who took her by railway mail train was actually a relative. Yet yeah, after Postmaster General Albert Burelson heard about this incident, as well as another inquiry someone had made that month about mailing kids, he officially banned postal workers from accepting humans as mail. Still, the new regulation didn't immediately stop people from sending their kids by post, and a year later, a woman mailed her six-year-old daughter from her home in Florida to her father's home in Virginia. At 720 miles, it was the longest postal trip of any of the children Pope has identified, and it only cost 15 cents in stamps. Then a year later, in August of 1915, three-year-old Maud Smith made what appears to be the last journey of a child by U.S. Post, when her grandparents mailed her 40 miles through Kentucky to visit her sick mother. After the story made the news, Superintendent John Clark of the Cincinnati Division of the Railway Mail Service investigated questioning why the postmaster in Canny, Kentucky had allowed a child on the mail train when it was explicitly against regulations. Pope would finish by saying, I don't know if he lost his job, but he sure had some explaining to do. And though Maud seems to be the last successfully mailed child, it wouldn't keep others from attempting to do it. But make sure to let me know what you guys think below. Thanks for watching.